Hi everyone, welcome. Uh, this is going to be a session for low back health, a little shorty session um, of a gentle practice for helping to ease achiness and pain in the low back. Um, so it's quite gentle. If you're having a little bit of trouble with your low back, this can be sometimes a really nice balm for that. So, all right, so we're gonna get started laying down on the back. If you want to get a, a pillow to sit on or a bolster, this is gonna come in handy later. Uh, bolsters are great if you've got them. If you don't, just a couple of folded blankets um, will be just as good. So take a moment and pick those out, pick, find those, and then when you're ready, you can come to laying down on your back. And we'll start in constructive rest. So you'll start with your knees bent and hands resting on the belly. And we're going to just focus on relaxing the low back muscles to start off with. And the best way to do that <laughs> is to do some deep belly breathing. So Bella's going to help us today. She's uh, very interested in yoga all the time. So. so we'll start off just by noticing your breath. Notice the rise and fall of your breath and where it moves in your body. Sometimes it's helpful to put a hand on the upper chest and a hand on the belly to kind of feel where there's movement, if there is any. That calibration with the hands on the body is a really useful tool for being able to notice what's actually happening in the body. So you can have eyes open or closed as you like. If you're keeping eyes open, just soften your gaze a little bit so it's a, a soft focus, not a hard focus. And then just take a few natural breaths and notice where the movement is in the chest, in the belly, maybe both. And then we're going to start to direct more breath into the belly. So you could slide both hands down to the belly if you want, or leave one hand on the heart and see about bringing more breath into the lower abdomen. So as you inhale, the belly expands like a balloon. And as you exhale, the belly softens back down towards the spine. And just taking a few rounds of breath like that. Expanding on inhale, softening on exhale. I often like to imagine watching how a baby breathes when it's sleeping. When a baby's deeply relaxed and sleeping deeply, you can really see that belly breath. So there's not a lot or if any movement in the chest. We tend to bring breathe more into the chest when we're um, ex anxious or in a heightened state of arousal we're angry, we're scared. We breathe more into the belly when we are relaxed and um, resting. So we can create the relaxation response by inviting breath into the belly and it has this physiological effect on our nervous system and just starts to take things down a little bit. So let's continue that belly breath. And if at any time it doesn't feel good, you just go back to natural breathing. Remember to listen to your body. And then leave the belly breath and just take a moment to notice. Breathe naturally. This is a really great breath to do before bed. Belly breath. Or anytime you're feeling anxious or like you have emotions running high. Okay, so then we're going to start to bring uh, knees into the chest. You'll have left hand on left knee, right hand on right knee. And as you exhale, just bring the knees in a little bit. They can be apart. Bring them in a little bit towards the shoulders. And as you inhale, press the knees forward into the hands, letting the arms straighten out. And then as you exhale, use the hands to pull the knees in towards the ribs or the shoulders. And as you inhale, press the knees forward away from your chest letting the arms straighten out. So you'll notice that you're rocking a little bit forward and back on the hips, on the pelvis, doing a little bit of massage to the low back. This can be quite soothing if you do have backache going on. So this is a very gentle little bit of mobility. 
and massage into that area. And just do a couple more rounds with your own breath. So you're breathing at the slow end of what's comfortable for you. And then when you're finished, just release the knees back down to the, your feet back down to the floor and take a couple of breaths. Well, always giving time to see how things feel. Often when it comes to the low back and with other things as well, if we do too much too quickly or we overdo it too fast, we don't find out until the next day. So it'll feel fine in the moment. And then the next day you'll realize, oh, I, I did too much or I overdid it. So let's do a little gentle stretch for the low back. You're going to hug your right knee in towards the right shoulder. You can take it around the outside of the right ribs and then in towards the armpit. And just taking a couple of breaths here, inhaling and exhaling. Feel free to exhale out the mouth at any time to release extra uh, tension either in the body or in the mind. You might be pressing the backs of the shoulders into the floor a little bit if you like. And if you want to make this a little stronger of a stretch, you could try straightening the left leg down on the floor. So for some that might feel like too much, just too much tension and it's not comfortable enough. And so you might go back to having that knee bent. This is just a very gentle stretch. You could do this in the morning when you're in bed still before you get up out of bed. A few of these things you can do in bed before you even get up to kind of wake up the spine and get things flowing and moving a little bit. Now change sides, bring the left knee in, take it out the left side of the ribs and in towards the left shoulder. Relax the shoulders or maybe even pressing the shoulders back and down towards the floor. Find your breath here. If you want to extend that right leg on the ground, go ahead or not, whatever feels good to you. Nice, deep, long breath to nourish the spine, get the blood flow, oxygen into those hard to reach places in the back. One of the reasons that yoga is so beneficial to back health is because of the increased circulation and blood flow to the area. So sometimes when there's been an injury, you can release that side, come back to constructive rest, knees leaning together. Sometimes when there's been a trauma or, or minor injury in the back, there'll become a blockage of energy, which is really just the, the back sort of creating a protective mechanism where it's, um, it tightens to protect itself from further injury. But even after the initial injury is passed, oftentimes that blockage or that locking up or that tension will stay there, that protective mechanism. So uh, when, when we move the spine and we breathe into the spine and take nice deep oxygenated breaths, the increase of flow of, of oxygen in the blood gets into the hard to reach places and the discs between the vertebra and helps them to heal. Yeah, it carries nutrients in the blood. So then we're just going to windshield wipe our knees a little side to side. There's a ton of stuff to say about yoga and back health and how yoga works to um, heal the back and help the back to feel better. But this is just a little taster, so I'll just tell you a few little tidbits that come up. So this windshield wiper action, your feet can be as wide as your mat. It's a very gentle twist that goes into the spine and maybe even a little stretch in the hips you might feel. And it's one that you can do quite safely as far as twists go. <laughs> and if you want to, you can synchronize this with your breath. So you could be inhaling as the knees come to center, exhaling as the knees float over to the side, and then inhaling center. And exhaling to the other side. Okay. Just taking a couple of rounds of that at your own pace. If the neck allows it, you could have a little turn the head if you want to. So you could be moving the head the opposite direction that the knees are going. Or if there's neck issues, you can keep the head centered, a bit more in a neutral position. And then with the 
and bring the knees back to center here and draw the knees back into the chest. Use this hug and a gentle rock from side to side. So again, that massaging action. So the other for back health is a really a combination of a few things. It's a combination of back muscles and stretching the back muscles and strengthening the core muscles, which are really important in supporting um, the back. And uh, it's also a relaxation element I talked about is essential in the healing process. So I'm just going to release the feet down to the floor. Release the feet flat on, on the floor with your ankles under your knees. <laughs> Bring arms down beside the body and we'll do just a little bit of bridge lifts here. So the hands are palms facing down. As you inhale, start to lift your hips and peel the spine up off the floor. Rolling the spine up vertebra by vertebra. And as you exhale, slowly rolling it back down. You can get each part of the spine moving separately, one by one, as it rolls down. And again, as you inhale, rolling the spine back up. See if you can use the full length of your breath to make the movement. So you're exhaling, inhaling, exhaling, 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 all the way down. And then inhaling, 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 all the way up. And again, this go at your own pace, the rhythm of your own breath, the slow end of what's comfortable for you. You can do it anywhere from three to six or seven. Or six. You want to keep the head and neck straight, so we'll try to avoid looking to the side or turning the head to the side. If you need to take a look. Roll over and lift your head up, lift up and look without turning the head while you're in bridge pose. Good. The last one, when you come up the last time, you can choose to hold the pose if you feel that, like that feels good to you, or you choose to exhale and release back down, down and rest. If you're holding the pose, take a couple of breaths there. Pressing the feet down and feeling all the muscles that get used here. The muscles in the back, the belly, the core, the legs. Lots of stuff gets fired up. So it's a really good, good pose as long as it feels good in your own back. And as you're exhaling, slowly roll back down. Take your time. And once the hips are back on the floor, take a couple of deep breaths here. Maybe some sighing exhale breaths. So inhaling through the nose and exhaling through the mouth. Good. Take one more big breath in here and exhale it out. And then as you exhale, roll over to the side and come all the way up to seated. And we're actually going to make our way right into tabletop position. So into uh, tabletop position. <laughs> One of the things that I want to say, um, when you're practicing for back health or you're practicing for anything that's therapeutic or you have an injury that you're working with, that is your primary focus. So when you're practicing with your back health in mind and maybe you have had issues in the past, never push into anything that feels like pain or even discomfort. Um, because that's just going to be a bit of a setback for your healing process. So you always just want to stay within what feels comfortable. If anything doesn't feel comfortable, just ease out. And that way you can slowly make pro progress and begin to build the trust again with your body. And the healing process can unfold that way. So then we're going to be drawing the belly in towards the spine. So you're going to squeeze belly in. Set your wrists under your shoulders, your knees under your hips. And as you inhale, you'll stretch your right arm, left leg back, squeezing the belly in. And as you exhale, place them back to the floor. And we'll inhale, left arm, right leg, lifting up into balancing cat. And as you exhale, bring them back down. Actually, let's change this up a little bit. Take your right hand forward so your fingers are just touching the floor. Arms straight, take your left leg back, so opposite arm to leg. The focus here is really in squeezing the belly in and up so the core gets a little bit of engagement. As you inhale, raise the arm and the leg 
to wherever height is comfortable. Could be part way, could be all the way. And as you exhale, just touch them back down, gently fingers and toes, keeping arm and leg straight, squeezing belly in. We'll inhale again, raise it up. So there's a little fine motor muscle control here. As you exhale, bringing it back down, squeezing belly in. We'll do one more here. So we're gently, gently building core strength with this. Exhaling down. And then we'll take a little child's pose here in between just to balance the spine. And you can take the knees a little bit apart and just rest your head on the hands or on the floor, wherever it's comfortable. Take two ha breaths here. Inhale nose and exhale mouth. Releasing tension. So I've got my knees a little bit apart here, which makes it more comfortable to breathe. Bringing the knees closer together gives more of a stretch in the back. It also gives a nice massage to the internal organs. But what you might find is it's diffi more difficult to breathe here. And you might find that the forehead maybe doesn't reach the, the floor. So you might need to support here. So find a, a child's pose that feels good in your own body. I find that's the most beneficial way. It's sort of a recovery pose. And if you're not comfortable and you can't breathe, then it's completely counterproductive anyways. Good. So when we come back up to tabletop, take a step forward with your right foot. Now I've got carpet here, so if you're on a harder floor, feel free to put something underneath the knees. I always like to love up the knees a little bit there. And we're going to give a stretch into the psoas, into the hip flexor. This is a really important part of back health, actually the hips in general. So we're just going to let the hips shift forward until we feel a little bit of a stretch right here. And you can ease out of it, let the stretch release, and just feeling and sensing right in that area. Maybe use your breath as you exhale, shift the hips forward and down, feel the stretch. And then inhale and come back out. And that a couple more times. Exhaling into the stretch, inhaling back out. Mm. The importance of, of hips um, being taken care of when it comes to back health is if the hips are tight in the front or the back and the psoas or in the, in the hamstrings, they'll tend to pull the pelvis um, into an unnatural non-neutral position. So we're just going to shift hips forward here and hang out for a couple breaths and breathe into that front of that thigh. And when the pelvis is either pulled back or pulled forward because of tightness in these um, hip muscles, it causes the spine that's attached to the hip bones and to be uh, pulled in one direction or the other. So it's not able to move freely the way that it was designed. So when the front and the backs of the hips are, are stretched out and not tight, in one direction or the other, then you have free movement of the pelvis and free movement of the spine the way that it was intended. Okay, blah, 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 blah. Let's step the right foot back and step the left foot forward. Whew, tight hip flexors today. Okay, so let's shift the hips forward as we exhale. Inhale to release. Relax the shoulders and just do a few of those with your own breath. Exhaling into the stretch. Inhaling out. And I've got my back toes curled under here, as you can see, just to keep alignment in the back leg. Also a little trick for stability. If you're feeling a bit tippy, side to side. If you take your left foot over to the left side a little bit more, like you're on train tracks, this is actually really helpful for stabilizing. Hold here for a couple of breaths, relax the shoulders, relax the jaw, smile. And if you want more challenge, you can close your eyes. And then when you're ready, release and come back to hands and knees. Mm, nom, 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 nom. Okay, so this is just a little mini session for back, low back health in particular. I'm going to take some circles here around to the side and back with the hips, kind of loosening up any tension from those holds. And 
rotating both directions around to the side and forth, to the side and back. And we're going to lower down to the belly and come into a little back bend for increasing flexibility and strength in the low back. Actually, this is where you let's do flying bird here, which is a, a really simple pose for building strength in the low back. So your hands can be a little ways away from the body, feet a little bit apart. This creates um, less um, tightness in the low back. If the feet are together, there's not a lot of space here. But if the feet are apart, you get a little bit more freedom in the low back, which is, feels pretty good for those of us with back issues. So what we're going to do is as we inhale, lift the head, the hands, and the feet, spread the fingers, spread the toes, point the hands, palms forward, and as you exhale, reach and rest your head on the floor. And as you inhale, lift hands, feet, and head, and as you exhale, float back down. And do that three more times with breath. And again, if it doesn't feel good, just leave it. Rest with your head on your hand. Head inhaling up, exhaling down. And go at your own pace. Last one. And exhale, release. Again, we'll find a little pillow for our head, hands supporting underneath. It may feel good here to rock the hips from side to side or bend the knees and just sway the shins a little from left to right. Take a couple of deep breaths here. Incidentally, doing belly breath when you're laying on your belly is excellent for releasing tension in the low back, releasing the muscles. Good. So when you're ready, Let's make our way back up to child's pose. So you could do a little baby push up with the forearms on the floor. Toes curled under, squeeze the belly. Or you could do a fuller push up or even a full push up. Totally up to you. Let's counter pose the little child's pose here. Take a ha breath. Inhale, nose, exhale, mouth. Good. Now let's come back to laying on the floor. So that's it. <laughs> Not even any standing pose today. Hello. Let's move back. I'm going to come to the floor and work a little bit into the outer part of the hip and the hamstring. So one of the things that can show up when you're having back issues is sciatica. Yeah, it's that feeling down the leg like a nervous. It's just not a fun feeling. If you ever had sciatica, you know it's not a nice feeling. And it can vary. It can be quite intense and aggravating at times, or it can be mild and just slightly annoying. So this is a stretch that can sometimes help sciatica, especially if the cause is piriformis syndrome, which is the piriformis is the muscle in the hip, the deep hip muscles in the hip. Sometimes there's not enough space for the sciatic nerve to go through. So one, if that's the case, one stretch that can be very helpful is four square with a needle. So we can just take left ankle on top of right knee. Flex your left foot a little bit so that your left knee is, is protected and aligned. And just start by pressing your left, left knee forward with your hand. That's the gentle version of it. You could rock a little side to side. There's another stage, which is to lift the right foot up, and you're welcome to take that version if you want to. So you could be interlacing fingers behind the right thigh or on top of the right shin. And you can check out if your head feels like it's hanging way back. You can put a little pillow or blanket fold underneath the head there. And we'll take a couple of, of breaths. Here. So just relaxing the shoulders as much as you can and deepening the breath as much as you can here. Ha breath is great. And then release and change sides. So that's one you can do if you have sciatica. You could do that two, three times a day for ten breaths each time and just see if it helps relieve it. Relieve it. It won't do any harm. 
So on the other side, right ankle on top of left knee, you can gently press that knee forward. Taking nice deep breaths there. So oxygen's getting in to all the places that we're stretching and strengthening and moving. You could rock a little side to side if you want. Either staying here or taking the stronger version, lifting the left foot. So the right hand goes in between the triangle space between the legs. A deepening breath, relax the shoulders, breathe into where you're feeling the stretch. A lot of the, the back health stuff is quite gentle by nature and a lot of it can be done on the floor, or close to the floor, which is really supportive for the back, right? So even our forward bends, our hamstring stretches, when we have the back flat on the floor, we have this nice support where the back stays flat rather than rounded. When we're rounding the back, it can have more pressure on the discs of the low back, and that can be problematic as well. So okay, we're going to hug knees in the last time, rock a little bit side to side. Nice deep breath here. We'll often use a lot of honeybee uh, bromery breath in the practice because the vibration is quite healing. It's quite helpful for our healing, natural healing mechanisms. Okay, so we're gonna take the left foot, place it on the floor. If you have a belt or a strap, you could put it around the ball of your foot. So strap or belt around the ball of the foot and then holding either side of the strap. So just gonna stretch the back of the leg, the right leg, the hamstring. Just taking it to your minimum edge of stretch where you start to feel it. And that could be not that deep and that's okay. Just taking a very gentle stretch and then using your breath into the back of the leg there. Just keeping in mind that hamstrings are some of the grumpiest muscles to stretch. So use as much breath as you can. Emphasize your exhale a little bit more. Feel free to exhale at the mouth. how we don't know how much tension we might be holding on to until we let the breath flow out of the mouth and then you really feel like this extra layer of letting go great practice and let's change sides bring the left leg up the strap right at the base of the toes the ball of the foot slide your hands down the strap so you can relax your shoulders and press up through the left heel and just breathing into the back of left leg here Nice spa breath. Interesting thing about the body. I'll tell you a little story to distract you from your hamstring yelling at you. <laughs> the body's always trying to move back towards a state of homeostasis or balance. Yeah, and that's that's healing. That's its natural state of health. It's always trying to get back there if there's a disbalance or an injury. It's always trying to move back in that direction. That's what it's designed to do. So what we can do for it is to create, try to create the optimum environment for that to happen. Yeah, to remove as many obstacles as we can, inflammation, things that are aggravating it um, or setting us back and creating a really favorable environment for healing. And that's what this gentle and restorative yoga practice really helps us to do. It helps us to create that space for natural healing to occur. So we'll release and bring the feet back down to the mat. And just do some more, a couple more gentle windshield wipers. Again, that gentle twist. You could take arms out to the side if you want to. How to find a bigger space to do my yoga. And then get yourself into a stretch child. So when you're ready, let yourself roll to the side. Make yourself uh, a support using either your bolster or your folds of blanket. Now for this one, because it's we're doing it therapeutically for our back in particular, 
it's really, really great if you can get uh, more height from your bolster. So like even this bolster is a little bit lower than what I would use. I would probably fold up a couple of extra blankets on top. So for example, this would be good. Because what you're looking for, you're looking for to grow tall and create this length or this traction in the spine. You grow tall, creating space between the vertebra. And then tucking the belly on top of the bolsters or the blankets or the pillows. Now ideally this would be the same length so that my head would also be resting on there. Because um, what that does is that pressure on the belly corresponds to space in the low back. It actually draws the vertebra apart a little bit and the discs between the vertebra have more space. Because oftentimes back pain comes from an impingement of a nerve the disc is pressing up against because it doesn't have enough space. So much more that I want to say about that, but I want you to have time to relax here. So finding that, um, that length in the spine and then folding forward, you can rest your head on your hands or you can rest the head to the side. You can have knees on either side of the bolster. You want to avoid sitting on the bolster. You want to be bolster right up against the torso and then getting tall and folding forward. And you can go ahead and settle in here, taking the glasses off if you wear glasses, taking a few deep breaths and just letting the weight of the body be supported with that bolster underneath. Maybe inhaling and exhaling. Take a couple of breaths out the mouth. Let the breath sigh out of your body. And with that breath, let the tensions and the worries and the cares of your day and of your life float through on the breath. And just coming into this really soft place with the breath. Feeling the rise and fall of your inhales and your exhales. Maybe letting the breath escape out of the mouth, letting the teeth part slightly. Relax your jaw, relax the roof of your mouth. And just letting the cares and worries melt away. So it just becomes you, your body, and your breath. You can follow your breath as it moves into the nostrils and fills up the lungs and then follow the breath when it leaves the lungs and travels up the windpipe and back out the nostrils. You see coming back to the breath, the mind wanders just gently bringing it back over and over to the breath again and again. You can stay here as long as you like. I recommend at least five minutes if you've got the time, roughly five, ten minutes or longer if you're comfortable. You can turn your head to the other side partway through if you've had your head to one side. You're just gently changing sides and your symmetry. You can always change it back when you're done. <laughs>